Our gospel readings today will be incorporated into our meditation. As for a reading from Emmanuel Swedenborg, this is Secrets of Heaven, number 10,252, passages 5 and 6. In Matthew, opening their treasures, the wise men from the east offered gifts to the newborn Lord, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Gold here means good, frankincense, internal truth, and myrrh, external truth. Both kinds of truth spring from good. In this instance, gold is the first to be mentioned because it means good, which is inmost. Frankincense is second because it means internal truth springing from good. And myrrh is the third or last to be mentioned because it means external truth springing from good. The wise men from the East offered those gifts to the Lord, born at that time, to indicate his divinity within his humanity. For having a knowledge of correspondences and representations, they knew what gold, frankincense, and myrrh each served to mean. So my friends, in a moment, we are going to begin a meditation that is centered on a reading from the Gospel of Matthew. But first, let us set a little context to guide our contemplations. Because as Swedenborgians, our interpretive framework is always to see biblical stories as ones that play out within ourselves. And as we sit here in the new year, one that feels so much like ones that have come before in ways we do not desire, this contemplation might feel somewhat heavy. It can be hard to feel hope right now. But in the story of the Magi, we are invited into the realization that as stuck as we might feel, there is an essential journeying that is always possible for us. We don't have to travel as far as the Magi did. Even the small ways that we travel and expand and learn within our own hearts and minds, that can be filled with starlight and curiosity and steadfastness in just the same way. So what is it that the story of the Magi asks us to see? There is Herod. We might need to observe how our inner Herod is raging. There are the Magi. We might be called to honor the curious parts of ourselves, the parts that want to learn, that are willing to move and travel and grow. There is the star. We might be invited to see where our small points of light are still shining. Where are they leading us? And there are the gifts. We might be drawn to see the ways the goodness of God is being given to us every day. Now these contemplations won't change our circumstances, but hopefully what they will do is help us stay present to our circumstances in grounded and compassionate ways. So, what we will do today is a modified Lectio Divina practice, which is basically the practice of repetitive scripture reading. Now, I've taken the traditional uh, Magi reading from the book of Matthew and broken it up into three parts. In the first round, we will just read those three parts with some silence for contemplation in between. And then, when I read them to, through for the second round, we'll add some reflection questions for your contemplation. So just two rounds today, and after the second round, I will finish up with a prayer written by Kate Comston. So, we are ready to begin, and I invite you, wherever you are, to take a comfortable seat, whatever makes you feel most ready 
to take a deep breath and to close your eyes. From the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 2. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another way. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied. When we hear about Herod, 
we are invited to consider the ways in which our own self-serving spirit tries to assert dominance. Can we hold these feelings in compassion while at the same time not acquiescing to their energy? Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way. And the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When we hear about the star, we are invited to consider the ways in which we are led by the Spirit. Pieces of insight that have shined bright and helped us along. What are these for you? right now. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another way. When we hear about the Magi and their gifts, we are invited to consider what journeys we are willing to take for the Lord and what gifts we are being called to offer. What might these be for us today? Let us pray a prayer of searching and traveling. O oh God, who am I now? Once I was secure in familiar territory, in my sense of belonging, unquestioning of the norms of my culture, the assumptions built into my language, the values shared by my society. But now you have called me out and away from home, and I do not know where you are leading. I am empty, unsure, uncomfortable. 
I have only a beckoning star to follow. Journeying God, pitch your tent with mine so that I may not become deterred by hardship, strangeness, doubt. Show me the movement I must make toward a wealth not dependent on possessions, toward a wisdom not based on books, toward a strength not bolstered by might, toward a God not confined to heaven, but scandalously earthed, poor, unrecognized. Help me to find myself as I walk in others' shoes. Amen. We will now take a moment of reflection with a musical interlude. <laughs> 